Please notice that Madison was hesitating. He sounded amused as he asked her, What's wrong? Is it so difficult to choose? She glared at him angrily. After he had made his intentions clear, she didn't fear him anymore. When facing a man who wanted to kill her child, she decided that it wasn't useful to be afraid. Even though the place was full of boxes that were waiting for organs to be placed in them, she wasn't afraid. At that moment, her only hope was that Allie had told Ian her whereabouts. Without her help, she realized she wouldn't be able to protect herself and her child. Sitting on the bed, Hades looked up at her and talked casually, as if he was just talking about the weather. What do you want to do? he asked. Madison couldn't see his expression under the mask, but just by hearing his voice, she could tell that he was happy. However, the happier he was, the angrier she was. I'm surprised that you even have to think about it, he said. You're quite pretty, but if you don't have a pair of hands or legs, you won't have such a good life. Can you design advertisements without hands? And if you don't have legs, you'll be stuck in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. Madison had been put in an impossible position. She was a healthy young woman, so it was almost unbearable to accept that she would have to rely on a wheelchair or wouldn't be able to hold a pen again. But at the same time, she wouldn't give up her child. She decided that she wouldn't choose either of the options he had given her. Not only would she not choose... But she would also think of a way that would allow her to keep her child after it was born. Seeing that Madison wouldn't commit to either option, Hades continued to persuade her. If you want my opinion, you should give up on the child, he suggested. You've divorced Ian Weston, so why would you want to carry his child and be ridiculed by others? I'll help you to abort the child, and you can continue to live your life without any pressure. Maybe in the future, you'll meet a better man, and then get married and have children. Wouldn't that be good? Just like you said, there are many people who don't want your child to be born. Once it's known that you've lost the baby, you won't be in danger anymore. You haven't been pregnant for long, so it wouldn't be such a great loss. You might as well let me do it now, because it would be much worse if you lost it later on. She gave him an angry look. And he said, Don't be angry with me. You should be thanking me. She couldn't stop herself from giving him a look of disgust. She hated the fact that he was being so casual about killing her child. She had tried to reason with him and had offered him a deal, which had seemed reasonable. But he had inexplicably turned it down. It seemed to her that he couldn't help himself from wanting to see people suffer. By giving her an impossible choice, her suffering was guaranteed, even though he was allowing her to leave his human avatar alive. She despised him for his malice, and it showed clearly in her eyes. Seeing her instinctively protecting her abdomen, he laughed and said, Putting your hands over it is not going to make any difference. You and your baby are in my hands now, and if I want to do anything to you, do you think you can stop me? If I want you to live, you can walk out of here unharmed. But if I want you to die, there's nothing you can do about it. Her body shook with anger and she glared at him. He said, I can see that you think that I'm disgusting. But do you think you're in a position to judge me? He stood up and put his head close to her. If it weren't for the mask, he might have kissed her on the cheek which was very close to him. He said, Madison, I've been doing this line of work for so long that I've seen all kinds of emotions. There was even a time when people used my name to scare their children. I don't care what people said about me behind my back, but since you're in front of me, you need to control your emotions. If you anger me, the results won't be pretty. After saying that, he pushed her away. She was shocked as he staggered forward, heading towards a table with a small box on top. Seeing that her belly was about to hit the sharp corner of the table, she forced herself to turn around and hit the corner with her waist. 
After that, she couldn't control herself and fell to the floor. She felt humiliated as she lay on the cold floor in her thin hospital gown. She hugged her stomach and shivered. The pain in her waist was excruciating, and she was worried that her baby would be affected by it. She wanted to scream at him, but didn't want to make him angrier. Allie, why aren't you here yet? Ian, where are you? She thought. For a moment, she imagined Ian rushing in and rescuing her, but she quickly stopped herself from wishful thinking and focused on how she and her baby could survive intact. She wanted to leave the place in one piece and with her unborn baby unharmed. Hades looked down at her and slowly shook his head. He then walked over to his assistant, who had unstrapped her from the bed, and said, Take her to the other place and watch her closely. Don't give her anything without my permission. The man picked her up and called for the help of another subordinate. Together, they walked her out of the main warehouse and led her towards a smaller warehouse, where she would be held securely. Both men wore masks, and she was unable to see what they looked like. As they led her away, they talked about her as though she wasn't there, and they seemed excited as they speculated about her fate. This woman's been lucky so far. She's received special attention. Nobody stays alive this long after coming here. She even dared to show her disgust for him, so she's got guts. What do you think he's planning to do with her? I don't know, but I don't expect it will be pleasant. He won't want people thinking that he's gone soft. I hope we get a watch. As Madison listened to them, she forced herself not to cry, even though she wanted to. When she was put into a room in the small warehouse, she was finally alone. The moment she heard the door behind her being locked, she hugged her stomach and started to cry. Ian, why aren't you here yet? Do you know how scared I am? You've admitted that you care about me, so why haven't you come yet? She thought. She felt that he was her only hope. It had been Ian who had helped her every time she had been in trouble. Whether it was done openly or behind the scenes, he had always protected her well. She had become dependent on his help and felt unable to exist without him. She hid in a corner and hugged herself tightly. She rubbed her hands together against her belly to create some warmth. She was determined to not let anything happen to her child. The air vent in the ceiling was excessively big. It was so big that it allowed a freezing wind to blow in, making her teeth chatter uncontrollably. Looking at the vent, Madison suddenly had an idea. She got up and walked quietly to the door. She looked through a crack and saw the two men smoking and chatting nearby. They were still wearing their masks, and they seemed to be very settled in their seats. After assuring herself that they would be chatting for a long time, Madison turned around and looked at the air vent. She didn't know where the vent would lead, but it would take her out of the locked room, so it offered some potential. She stretched her arm towards the vent and felt a sharp pain in her waist. She realized that it was far too painful for her to stretch, so she would need to get very close to it. She looked around for something to stand on and saw some large cardboard boxes along one of the walls. She opened one of them, hoping that there would be something inside that would be capable of taking her weight, enabling her to reach the vent.